they cut off the video there. Uh, drain plug I was talking about. Right there, sorry. Right there with the big hex. Also, if you're wondering how to get those off, uh, either buy the hex or um, uh, pipe wrenches also work. They're usually not on there that tight, so you don't need to worry. But that one right there is a fill plug. Um, that one's the fill plug. Let me see what else we got. Uh, fill plug. I've already told you about the check plug. And then uh, there are a few inspection uh, inspection spots. I don't believe uh, there's one behind this piece right here, but that's impossible to get off. Or it's possible. It's just you have to pull off the gas tank, do a bunch of stuff with this, and that's really. I mean, that's time consuming. But if you if you uh, pull a lot of sludge out of your transmission, uh, yeah, you should probably uh, go through the time to check those. Um, yeah. And then if you're wondering, I do have this side panel. It's just I have to... This spot right here for the oil cooler, uh, it was built wrong. Or it wasn't built wrong. It was built right. It just... Um, uh, the we, it, it used to come out straight and up. We built it at an angle so it'd use less stuff. But that uh, doesn't work with the tin. So going to get that fixed one day. And then... Uh, there is a plug on this side, I know for a fact. Um, right there, there's a wood plug. It should be metal, but that one was replaced with a wood plug. I just kind of kept it in there because I think that's uh, pretty interesting. Someone went through the time to carve out a wood plug. Uh, that's pretty interesting to me. <coughs> but yeah. And then, um, I forgot to go over coolant and uh, air purification for the motors. Uh, of course... Uh, coolant is going to be at the top of the radiator. Uh, if you don't know that, again, you shouldn't be working on this machine. All right. Did I already say that? No, I think I said that when I was recording, but I didn't press the button. Never mind. But yeah, anyways, if you don't know that your coolant is on top, you shouldn't be running this machine. Someone has a car. All right. Uh, but yeah, coolant, I fill up to the top of here, and then it usually overflows, goes down there, into a bucket uh or you should have a bucket but if you're like me uh you have a not exist you have a non-existent bucket and that works just as well just make sure youtube isn't watching uh that's a very important thing that youtube is not watching when you're using a non-existent bucket um yeah and then uh let's go over what i was about to say uh air purification uh uh of course you're gonna have to change the oil and uh, your oil bath air cleaners. Uh, you just gonna do two wing nuts, wing nuts, and then uh, drain out your oil. This one you drain it into a real bucket, all right? Uh, unless you really don't care about dying grass. Unless you really, I mean, this grass is a pretty healthy. I mean, if you have a, if you don't care if your grass is dead, that's what I should say. All right, but anyways, uh, dump that out into a proper container. Uh, to fill it up to this line uh well for, before you fill it clean it out uh the carb spray I get all the sludge out all the nasty crap clean that out one second let me wash off the camera all right better maybe all right but clean that out uh fill it back up to this line uh this will tell you more uh there's a tag right there if yours is gone that's how you do it um same thing with pony motor uh drain it out clean it fill it up to that big bump again two wing nuts pretty simple uh yeah and then i forgot to add i i don't remember no um maybe there's should be some small screens in a pony motor uh air cleaner uh you anyways at least in the diesel there's i'll show you how to do it with the diesel the diesel you pop off this uh oil bath of course there's a, a band right around here on a pipe. You loosen up that band, all the screens pop out. Uh, clean those out, compressed air. Not, not too much so you break them. Just get all the bigger crap out of them, clean them, and put them back. And then I uh, forgot to add um, your fuel, uh, fuel filters. Uh, there is two uh, in this machine. At least in this machine, they're in a certain spot. Don't know about others but this is an earlier machine but uh you're gonna pop off these four bolts 
those four bolts, not this, not this. Uh, there will be a, usually a brass one and a paper element that looks like a, a yarn, a yarn ball. Uh, you take out those both. Um, the brass one, don't not take apart. Uh, those are really hard to put back together. Don't know how that happens, but uh, I just don't take them apart. It sounds really hard to put back together. Uh, very tedious, I'm sure. But just, uh, you can loosen them up. Loosen it up a little bit. Uh, count how many turns you do. Uh, make sure you count the turns. Uh, spray it with carb spray it with carb spray, and then um, just take a rag to the outside. No air. You don't want to mess up all those little brass washers. And then the the yarn one uh, is pretty. You can buy them from Wix, Caterpillar. Uh, I'm sure you can get a few other places, but that one's replaceable. Just replace it. And then um, don't remember if I went over this, but I'll just do it again. Um, uh, the injection pump housing that has its own oil. Uh, you fill it through there, drain plug on the bottom, fill it up to the top of the neck. And then uh, for the starting system, uh, there's the fill plug right there. Hold on, one sec. Fill plug uh, right there, of course. Check plug right there, drain plug somewhere on the bottom. Uh, you should be able to see it. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, that's not factory. That's not factory. Uh, this lever replaces this. That one broke. And then this uh, is a starting mechanism. Uh, very interesting. You press a button. This should. You pull this. Then you pull it back. And that tensions the belt. And that, in turn, presses the button. It turns on the solenoid. It turns on the starter. Uh, pretty interesting. I had to replace the starter button. Yeah, pretty neat. And then, uh, of course, make sure your, uh, these levers aren't dead. Uh, make sure this one, uh, does something. Uh, make sure it feels smooth. Uh, yeah. That, that one's just, make sure you flip this back. There should be some pressure on it. When you turn it to the run position, it should be easier. But when you turn it to the start position, it's a little bit hard. Uh, just be ready for that. And if it's not moving, just spray uh, uh, penetrating oil all along the linkages. Uh, it runs all the way to the back side. Uh, so yeah, pretty easy. And then uh, point of motor fuel tank right there. Um, uh, sediment bowl. Can I focus? That's the sediment bowl. Always turn the sediment bowl off. Never turn off the pony motor with the mag switch. Uh, you let it cool down. The amount of time it takes for that to drain out all the fuel in the carburetor and the line should be the time that it takes for the pony motor to cool down and uh gasoline will drain into the crankcase uh cause premature wear on the engine and then also it will uh uh one hydrolock your motor too will do that too uh if the valve is open uh, even if they are closed i'm sure it'll still do it and then also um Carburetors get gummed up really easy on these. Oh, uh, they're down. They're downdraft, so really easy. And then pony motor oil fill right there. I don't remember if I went over that one. And then um, let me get down. That was I just showed you the pony motor oil fill. Uh, I don't remember if I showed you the diesel one. Uh, the diesel fill is right here. You pop that clip back. Uh, that lid comes out to you, and then fill it up with five gallons of oil. Uh, I'm sure Pony Motor is like one or two quarts. Don't quite remember. Uh, yeah, that's uh, transmission slash engine. A lot of talking, I know. Uh, sorry about that. Just, uh, I gotta go over this stuff so you don't kill your your uh, classic Caterpillar machine. Uh, these are rare. Uh, I don't want any of them to go to waste, okay? How about that? We don't want any of them to die. Uh, making a goal. Uh, very good goal to set. But yeah, we don't want any of these machines to go away. But I understand parts machines, but because those, I mean, you got to sacrifice a few to make a few running. But yeah, I hate parting out machines, but what's you got to do? Uh, you can't buy all the parts anymore, so that's how it goes. But uh, anyways, you got two oil cups on the generator, forgot to say. That's oil every uh, three, no, 120 hours you put, uh, I think, one or two squirts of oil in those two little cups on the generator. 
Uh, yeah, uh, fan belt has to have a, a half inch of travel. A uh, half inch of travel in the fan belt. And then um, make sure valves are set correctly when you buy your machine. Uh, yeah. And then um, we'll go to uh, tires, I think, here. Or tires slash rims. Uh, inspect your tires and rims. Um, make sure the slack ring is fully seated. Uh, you see that's a split right there. Uh, make sure that's fully seated. Make sure your tire is fully seated. Make sure your tire, tire isn't a piece of crap. You see mine's a little bit of dry rot. A uh, little chunk taken out there. Other side. I think there's a, a big chunk. Yeah, there's a chunk taken out here on this side. But yeah. Uh, but I don't know. That happens. These were military surplus. Uh, so they, they're used. But you know those big Oshkosh semis? That's what they came off of, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. And then uh, your front rims. Uh, I'll show you what they look like over here. Currently, I'm replacing my front rims uh, with safer ones. Very hard to find uh, safer ones, by the way. But uh, this would be your killer rim uh, setup. You have a split right there. That's factory. Um, that's If you're wondering why your front tires are shot, it's probably because no one would change them because it's that style rim. Um, this style rim... I recommend uh, replacing it if you if you can. Look forever to replace the thing. Um, do that. You gotta try and do that. If you can't, if you, avoid it at all to try and reuse that. But if you can't, uh, take him to a guy who knows what he's doing. Um, don't let the average Joe tire shop do it. They're gonna kill themselves. Uh, that's very dangerous. Dangerous rim. I don't even know how to change them. Does. I don't, there's no point in learning. I I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't change them if I were you. They're kind of sketchy too. But uh, if you know how, you got a tire cage. Uh, you know how to do them. You're safe with them. Uh, do it. I guess. But I wouldn't do it if I were you. But uh, yeah, those would be your front rims, of course. Uh, inspect those tires and rings. Uh, it's given. And then um, gearboxes, I guess. Since we're already at the front axle. Um, this is filled with gear. Um, yeah, this is a Levine. A Levine? Levine? Levine gear. I don't know what that says. I'm sorry, I can't read. Uh, patent pending. Uh, apparently that gearbox is supposed to help with steering. Uh, it doesn't help at all. It's just impossible to steer. Um, the way I steer with this thing in a certain spot, you have to be moving to turn the thing. But if you can't move, you drop the blade, turn the wheel... Uh, pick up the blade, drive forward a little bit, drop the blade again, turn the wheels, back up. No, pick up the blade, then back up. It's a process. Uh, how about that? And um, uh, I believe this gearbox right here is filled with uh, 130 weight gear oil. Uh, this is what I would fill it with. This is what I fill it with. Um, uh, 130 weight in the summer, 90 weight in the winter. Uh, Non-detergent, of course. Uh, that transmission, you don't need to worry about. There should be a side shift, side shift there. Uh, but someone replaced it with the uh, transmission for some reason. But, um, side shift, grease up. Uh, there, that gear set. And then, uh, side shift, I'm sure. Same type of oil that the circle shift uses. Uh, circle shift uses, of course, this, uh, that's, that's the gearbox for the wing. Uh, that, of course, also uses 130 weight and 90 weight gear oil. Um, yeah, that one, there's a plug on top, chuck plug on the side, drain plug right there. This one, plug on top. Um, looking for the other plugs on this. And then the uh, uh, blade shift. Where is it? Uh, is that one filled with oil? Shh. I don't think that one's filled with oil. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that one's filled with grease. Never mind. That's the grease one, I, I believe. Squatch253 for watching us. Uh, please tell me or please put it in the comments. Um, yeah, thank you. Sorry, I don't know that one. Uh, don't listen to me. I mean, should you listen to me and don't listen to me. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm, I think that one's grease, actually. But uh, yeah, that one, I know for sure... 
that that's an oil one. And I'm fairly confident that the side shift is also an oil. And then, um, I guess we go to, uh, a grease search. But before that, I need to tell you that the fuel tank for the diesel is right under the seat. You pop off the seat. There'll be a massive, uh, a massive, um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, a filler cap. But it's like five inches, six inches big. Uh, it says buy clean fuel to keep it clean. Unscrew that. It takes a lot of unscrewing. Uh, it's it's like a fine thread thing. It's weird. But yeah. We'll go over the grease hooks now. Start at the back of the machine. Work your way forward. Uh, if you have optional wing, you're going to have one right there. Uh, I always oiled up right in here. I always oil those. And then pump oil each one of these holes. Uh, just so that doesn't rust completely shut and then um, Oil the hinges of course I do that uh, Just hinges right there and there. I oil those too just with a little oiling cup uh, There should be a grease circ right on top there Right on top there, but it broke off of course and of course oil all the pins and then uh, WD-40 or some cheap penetrating oil all along the cable uh so that doesn't fray and snap uh, that happens and then uh chorus grease your slide uh where the wing slides up and down chorus oil the clevises again penetrating oil along the cables um yeah uh try to make sure that your that uh this is tight uh i'll have to tighten that bolt back up one day so I'll have to do that eventually. And then, uh, I don't know. Does someone know if that's bent? Because that, that doesn't seem right to me. I don't know. But yeah, that, uh, make sure that's all greased and lubed and all that crap. And then, uh, I got grease circs back here. Um, don't do too much. I forgot. I think it's every 120 hours. I think it's like two pumps. I want to say. Uh, maybe one pump. I don't remember. But yeah, just hardly grease that one right there. Hardly grease it like every 300 hours, I want to say. And then there's going to be grease cirques right on there. Uh, of course, as many pumps as you want. Yep, there's a grease cirque. It's right there. As many pumps as you want, pretty much. Just until the grease starts pumping out the sides. Um, of course, don't over grease it. Then you're going to be attracting dirt. Uh, always wipe off. Uh, I'm I'm kind of a hypocrite, but yeah, always wipe it off. I don't know. I was younger when I greased uh, that last because I never used a parking brake. I was younger when I greased that, so I didn't wipe it off, but I should have, and I didn't. Same thing on this side for this tire. Um, you're going to have more grease circs on linkages. Uh, of course, there's going to be another one right there. Linkages, uh, uh, there's going to be some under the cab. You have to crawl into your machine, but... All of those, there's grease circs all over. Just look hard enough. Of course, there's one right there, of course. And then, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think what else is in the back of the machine that needs to be greased. Uh, I don't think anything else. And then, uh, of course, you're going to check your battery. Uh, battery box. One second. There you go. Battery box is right there. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Anyone know if these came with factory wood steering wheels? I'm kind of wondering. Uh, but yeah. Grease that one every now and then. Uh, forgot to go over oil for the power control box. Um, hold on. Uh, of course, this would also be the 90 weight uh, in the winter, 130 weight in the summer. Depending where you live. If your winters are cold, like here in Minnesota, of course, you're going to change it to the 90 weight. If it's hot, like, if you live in Florida, just keep it at 138 year-round. Uh, yeah. But, uh, of course, the check plug is right there. Drain plug is on the bottom somewhere. Uh, I think it's on the other side. Yeah, drain plug is right, right there, as you can kind of see. Uh, yeah. Hold on. But yeah, fill plug, check plug, drain plug on the bottom I showed you. And then check plug for this bottom box, 
fill plug, check plug, drain plug on the bottom, uh, somewhere on the bottom. Uh, don't feel like sticking my hand in a bunch of oil. And then, um, yeah, there's that stuff. And then I always oil up these shafts when I, before I go to run it. Oil up these linkages over there. Uh, you'll have your throttle slash fuel shut off linkages. Um, right there would be, and then you'd, I do that one and that one too. And then, um, greaser all over this spot right here. You're going to, of course, every year join, you're going to have, uh, five right there. Uh, one, two, three, wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five more. Uh, other U joints. You have five, six, seven. So seven more uh, on just shafts. Just shafts. There's seven. And then um, you're going to have grease arc right over there. There on a pulley. One right there on another pulley. Another one right there on that pulley. Then your pulley's up top. Of course, you're going to get greased. Water just fell into my face. And then uh, oil up that pin that that pulley slides on, of course. It's kind of block pedal late here. That Where that pulley is right there, there's going to be a grease arc right there. And then, uh, of course, grease up that pin that it swivels on. And then uh, grease those, of course. And then, oh, man, this is going to get expensive here in a moment. Uh, you're probably going to be using, like, a tube of grease every time uh, you grease this thing. But one right there, another one there, another one there, and then another one there, one there, uh, another one there. Oh, one more. Okay, find a more. I think that's all. Oh, there's one more right there. And then, um, trying to think. Yeah, so that's all of those on the jack. Uh, this... A lift jack, same thing on the other one. Don't think I need to go over that again. And then uh, I'm going to have one right there, of course. And then that one I already talked about right there. Another two. One right there. Another one right there. And then blade. I greased the top of this before I use it. Um, if yours has serious wear like this, if you are rolling in the dough, or cash, however you want to say it, uh, I would replace that if you can, or get it machined. But that's expensive, and I don't have that much money, so I kind of just deal with it. Uh, I try to, but it bothers me, uh, having all those pushed out like that. But I just kind of grease the top of this, um, and the bottom. I'll rub there. I'll put a grease on a brush or something, put it all along the bottom, too. And then, uh, depending on how much you, you ever change your blade position, uh, I always grease, or I mean, uh, oil, penetrating oil, all along those bolts. Uh, oil on the, and there, there, there. And then, uh, go to the other side. Hold on. And then, of course, same thing on this side. Uh, penetrating oil there, oil, and then normal oil there. Uh, of course, normal oil right there, too. Uh, like I said, a bunch more. Same thing. That lift screw, same on this one. Um, yeah. Uh, anyone know in the comments if that nut's supposed to be there? Or if that was... If this broke off and they just somehow fixed it like that. Just wondering. Just kind of wondering. And then um, your side shift works. Uh, this uh, I-beam right here. You want to grease that. Uh, shift it all the way one way, shift your side shift all the way that way, all the way that way, then bring it back, o grease it, bring it back over, grease the other side. Um, yeah, that one's pretty easy. And then um, it says in the book to grease up, to take your grease on a brush and grease the whole, that mold board and that mold board. And if you have the factory V-plow or wing, or any V-plow or wing, grease those too. That's a lot of grease. So uh, I don't do that, but um, when I restore this machine, I probably will. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, forgot to add, of course, you're going to check your tire pressure. Uh, that's 
no brainer. Look at your tire. Um, look at your tire pressure, of course. It's easy to do. Uh, it says on the side. And then check it. Um, yeah. And then uh, front end, a lot of, a lot of grease zerks on this one. Uh, you're going to have one there, another one there. And then I want to say there's one on that spring but i don't think there is um but yeah there's gonna be one there on the bottom side i think and then you're gonna have there 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 another one on the bottom and one there there uh you all, all, all uh every now and then uh pop off uh this cap uh slide off the wheel and hub uh, repack the bearings. Um, that's a very, uh, hard process to do, I could imagine. Um, yeah, they, these weigh a lot. These, that's a solid cast piece, so get a forklift ready. And then, uh, uh, let's see here. I already told you that's filled with grease, just boxes. Oh, yeah, another grease circ right there, of course. Um, you're gonna have a grease circ right in there. One down there. Uh, let's see here. There and there. Again, repack bearings every now and then. Uh, every, I'm going to go with two or three years, depending how much you use it. Uh, of course, you're going to have another grease circ there. And then uh, one on there. On that one right there. And then... I believe that pin right there also has a grease circ. Yeah, a lot of a lot of grease on this thing. I bet you'll go with like a tube of grease every time you grease it. And then also if you have your factory push blade or a V plow, uh there's gonna be a whole bunch more grease circs and you're gonna have a quick change quick change gearbox that runs off of no, I don't even know. Did the old ones have quick change gearboxes like the newer ones? But uh, if you have the, uh, still have the side shift, it'll be usually a yoke on the other end, a U-joint yoke. And that will run out to your either scare fire controls or front accessory. Uh, yeah. That was a lot. Whew. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. That's about all I have to say on uh, uh, maintaining this machine. Uh, sorry this is a long video. I know, it's, it's hard. Uh, trying to fit all this stuff into one video is really hard to do without skipping a bunch. Um, again, I recommend getting manuals as fast as you can, um, before you screw something up. Um, if you don't, ha if you have any doubts, uh, please don't listen to me if you have any doubts of me. Go to the Antique Caterpillar Machinery Owners Club. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.